I did make out on it. I did make, I, I made a profit on it. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. Sometimes I go picking with my boyfriend, sometimes it's my best friend Sue, and sometimes it's my kids. But at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and hopefully just maybe making a profit. Okay, out on the table here in front of me, I have everything that we purchased in our last two shopping videos yesterday and the day before. Um, we visited two thrift shops. Yesterday we were at the Goodwill and the day before that we were at the Community Aid. So now we're going to talk about what we got what we paid for it and how much I can expect to get for it either on eBay or Etsy and why. So um, I've already taken the initiative and peeled off all the little stickers to list the stuff on eBay. So I can't tell you exactly what I paid for each item, but I've split this up so that over here we have community aid and over here we have Goodwill. So I can tell you that I spent $65 at the community aid. So let's talk about everything that we got for that $65 and what I can expect to get for it or what I think I can get for it. So, <laughs> um, all right. So it's a lot of like little itty things, but not including this mug because, it, well, actually I did buy this mug in this haul. I had this mug in my last haul and I was using it. And Funny, I should have it on the table in the video where I actually bought it, which was this video. So there we go. Um, okay. So let's talk first about our juice craft. Oh, I just love this juice crap. Um, and it was funny because it actually had a lid on top that said like Pillsbury frosting. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, that doesn't go with that. <laughs> In my head I'm thinking, well maybe it does. No, there's no way. Like, and I'm thinking, is this like a brand? Is this a brand of Pillsbury frosting? Like, is this one of those mail away things where you mail it away and then you get like a juice crap? I'm trying to think this through in my head. Clearly it is not, it has nothing to do. Somebody just stuck a frosting lid on it. Um, <laughs> so I'm not, I can't tell you exactly how much I paid. Oh, yeah, actually I do still have a sticker on this. I paid $5 for the entire set. So that is the juice carafe and that is nine glasses. And these are poppies. They are yellow poppies and it is made by Anchor Hawking. So one of the actual juice carafes sells for about $18, but considering we have all the glass, we have nine glasses, nine glasses. Um, I think we're going to do pretty well with that. So we can make at least $18 on the juice craft. And then we add in all the glasses. I think we can get at least 40 for it. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, those things are so hit or miss. You have to find that exact person who's like, I like that juice craft and I need those glasses. So, I mean, so that's the way with all this vintage stuff. This is all stuff that, you know, people have to have that disposable income and want it. So as long as there is disposable income out there, they will buy this stuff. <laughs> um, this is not stuff they need. This is stuff that they want. Keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, so also, oh, Mr. Grandpa, you're supposed to be on this side. This is the Goodwill side. Stay over there on your side. Okay. Let's talk about our little planter doggy here. Also part of our community aid haul, part of our $65. Now, when I first spotted him, I suspected he was Morton Pottery, and some of you did mention that in the comments that maybe he was Morton Pottery. I could not find another example of him. I did not have any Morton Pottery books. I could not confirm that he was Morton Pottery, so I did not list him as Morton Pottery. I did not go out of my way to say, this is Morton Pottery, because if I can't prove it, I'm not going to say that it is. So he is absolutely adorable. He's such a, like a, just a little petite little thing. And he's got the angriest face. He's mean mugging it <laughs> without a doubt. So I like that he's periwinkle blue and there's a trend with Scotty stuff. Scotty stuff usually sells pretty well. So I'm expecting this to probably do 20 to 25. Although I think right now I have it listed on eBay and it's at 20. So it might even do better than that. Um, but Scotty stuff definitely does does pretty well. Now, and the matter of the fact that I cannot find another one like it may also increase the value because maybe this is a rare piece by Morton Pottery. Who knows? But I'm always looking for little fun planters that I've never seen before because I see a lot of planters. 
Now let's check this out. This was the coolest, and I know how much I paid for this. I only paid two dollars for this. This is New York World's Fair. 1964 to 1965 and it is the glow uh, it's got its original sticker on the bottom which just makes it so cool what are the odds like the original sticker um, 1961 NYWF whatever that means this is Unisphere presented by United States seal made in Japan but it's just like a little globe it's ceramic uh, but it, the World's Fair stuff sells very very good um, typically, I've seen that the early World's Fair stuff, like the Art Deco World's Fair stuff, that sells really well, but um, I'm, I'm expecting that that will sell pretty, pretty well as, as well, pretty well as well. So we'll see how that goes. Right now it is on eBay. I believe the bidding is right around $30, so I don't know how that piece will do. I don't come across World's Fair stuff very often, so I can't very well predict what this is going to do so i'm excited to see how it does all right um let's talk about our mug you guys know i like fun and funky mugs this one i was able to find other examples of this mug without the ozarks on the top so i think this is just kind of a souvenir mug uh, they probably made them and you could put your business or you know ozarks or whatever on your city on the top of it and just sell it as a souvenir so must be something i ate and i think it's like a hangover mug possibly a beer mug or something like that but it's just this guy who's like same double i swear one of these times i'm gonna knock something off this table um it's just this guy that's seen double i could not find any sold there were quite a few listed between 15 and 18 dollars so I listed mine low starting bid uh, because it does have the Ozarks on the top that kind of narrows my market a little bit compared to those that are listed that don't have the Ozarks on the top. Those, those have a little bit wider market because they're not, you know, so specific. It's late guys. You're going to have to bear with me. <laughs> Here's another piece. Now this is interesting because when I looked at this in the community aid, and if you were watching the video, I, Thought that this was bohemian glass and before li listing it i did find out it was differently uh this is typical of bohemian glass that has the flowers on it and it would have fooled me if i hadn't done my research but i did do my research and i found out that this is a very popular um i, I guess you could say knockoff or reproduction um this piece specifically this amber vase is made by nasco japan and it is made to look like bohemian art glass it is not bohemian art glass and you can kind of tell like after i found that out it kind of was like well duh it's actually pretty obvious just the weight of it uh, the quality of it i should have known i guess i was just hoping holding on to hope that just maybe uh so this sells between 15 and 20 dollars it was bohemian glass so you know we might be talking a little bit more but it's not so We'll do okay with that. Now our brandy snifter. I come across these a lot. I love them. Typically I'm able to call them Empoli. I could not specifically call this one Empoli. I'm not sure if it is. So I did not go out of my way to call this one Empoli. Uh, it does not have any optic appearance in the glass. I don't know if you can see my hand through the glass. A lot of the times it has an optic design and it's got like kind of diamond pattern that you can see through the glass this is just plain it's it's very kind of boring but it is a pretty amethyst glass so i listed it it's, it's probably it could probably go between 20 and 30 dollars but like i said it, it has no optic pattern the only thing it really has going for it is that it is a pretty amethyst glass and I can't really contribute it to Impole, unfortunately. Not with good conscience. So I just listed it as art glass. This little guy. Now, if you guys remember the raccoon that we had not long ago, uh, it was made in Uruguay. And I pronounced the, the collection that it was made for. It was like Artesian Rinconada. Art, art, yeah, I'm not going to try it again. Uh, it was part of that collection. 
this guy is also part of that collection. He is made in Uruguay, and you can just tell the way he's made. You can tell by um, the texture of him. But he is so cute. And I know I paid six or seven dollars for him because I saw him on the shelf. They knew I was coming today and they knew I was going to buy this regardless of what price they put on him because I <laughs> could not say no and they knew it, but it's all good. Um, I know it's going to a good cause and I like community. I know where my money is going, so it's okay. So anyway, about this little guy. Um, now, if you see on his paw here, this is the artist's signature. There were different artists that contributed to this collection and different artists' work sells for more money than others. I don't know which artist this is. I don't know what signature this is. I can't make heads or tails of this. It just looks like scribbles to me. So I listed it. I took a clear picture of the signature. I paid six or seven dollars for it. I know I'm already making, I think, 16, 17. So I'm making more than I paid for it and I'm okay with that. So, he's so cute. <laughs> Somebody's gonna love him. But yeah, I'm just, if, if I knew the artist, I could tell you exactly how much I was gonna make on that, but we don't know the artist, so. This vase right here, I suspect is made in Japan. Uh, it's not marked. I don't even see any residue from the sticker actually, but I do suspect it is made in Japan. And it has a rooster on it. When I picked it up in the store, I did not notice any damage. I was so thrilled there's no damage on the rooster, but there's a very, very, very good repair on this. It's not on the rooster. It's actually on the edge. Now, when we find porcelain that is chipped, Sue talks about being able to repair the chips. And one of the ways she repairs the chips is with a nail file and actually filing down the chips. And somebody clearly did that here. And that's why I didn't notice it when I bought this because it doesn't look like a chip and it actually doesn't really very much feel like a chip. But there is a chip on this piece and when I was photographing it, I noticed that this little kind of ridge was not right. <laughs> Upon closer expect inspection, um, I did notice that it did have a boo-boo, so. I would expect probably to get, I don't know, 10 to 15 for this. Just a little bud face. Uh, our little cloisonne kitten. Now, these are not terribly old. Some cloisonne is very, very old and very, very valuable. Uh, <laughs> these are probably 1970s and they come from China. Um, they are imports, I do believe. Uh, cloisonne is metal, but it's like an enamel. It has enamel on it. And I have bought cloisonne vases and turned them for very good money. But you have to know what you, you're looking for and they have to be old. And there are a lot of modern pieces out there so you have to be very careful when you're buying it for resale you don't want to pay too much for it if you come across a piece at a thrift store and it's only a couple dollars and you want to take that gamble that is fine but if you find a piece at an estate sale say and they want seventy dollars for it um make sure you think twice i'm not speaking from personal experience though <laughs> no i did i bought uh, a cloisonne vase from an estate sale for seventy dollars i did make out on it i did make <laughs> I, I made a profit on it, but uh, what I'm trying to say is you just don't know. I mean, at the time I was like, I really like this. I think it looks good. I'm going to buy it. But I could have, you know, lost my shorts. I think that's an expression, right? Um, anyway, so these are just 1970s. They're just little tragedies. But one of the cats, this guy, sells for about $12. These little guys by themselves sell for $7 a piece. So you put together the Happy Kitty family. Um, one set of Happy Kitty Families sold for 13, which was kind of silly when you break them apart and they sell for 14 and 12. Uh, so I don't know, I'm thinking maybe 18 to 20 for the Happy Kitty Family, unless I only get $12 for them and I'd be okay with that too. I'm not paying that much for this stuff. Let's talk about our little, I guess you could call it soap dish, trinket dish. It is not marked on the back. 
um, all it says is Libby, who was probably the artist who painted the butterflies and the flowers on it. I just thought it was a nice little dish, and being it is, as it is a handmade piece, we talk about handmade pieces, um, the beauty is, you know, in the eye of the buyer. If they look at this piece and they say, I really like that, they're going to buy it. But to put a value on this is kind of hard to do. So I'm going to list this to auction. It's already listed, actually. And we'll see how it does. It has a low auction starting price, but it's cute. I mean, the art, the artwork isn't the best I've seen, but it's not the worst either. So we've got that listed. Uh, the Carolers. I bought the Carolers. I paid $1 for this one and $2 for this one. I do remember some of what I paid. Uh, I bought these because one of my viewers had said that they were collecting these. And they had to have just these two. And I remember that when I saw them and I thought, you know, for $3, I could just pick those up and I'll list them and maybe I can complete somebody's collection. So I wouldn't typically pick these up except that somebody said that they needed them for their collection. So that is why I bought them. And I listed them as a starting bid of $6 and they are at $6 and 50 cents. So I made double my money minus all the taxes and fees. So I hope the bidding goes a little bit higher. <laughs> All right, uh, cheese, I guess you could call this a cheese saver or a butter dish, either way. It's just a little cottage. Sometimes it's these are made by, in, uh, 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 sometimes these are made in Japan, sometimes these are made in England. In this case, it is made in England. I have bought some made in Japan. I have bought some made in England. Uh, this is actually pretty good quality. Cool made by Price Brothers out of England. Similar ones have sold between $15 and $25. Mine is listed right now. And I want to say the bidding is at $18 possibly. But I buy those from time to time. I do believe that ones from England sell better than the ones from Japan. But don't quote me on that. All right, so I think that is Everything, oh no it is not, we forgot this guy. Eek. We forgot the owl. Now, <laughs> you guys know I'm pretty much obsessed with owls. Uh, this owl is 1978 Miller Studio Inc. He has chalkware, which is amazing that he has chalkware because he only has like three joints on him. And those of you who know chalkware know that chalkware always has doinks. Uh, he's in very good condition. He is heavy because he has chalkware. He's got all these staples in the back. I don't know why. Got a ton of staples. Uh, but he's just wall art. He kind of looks like the Tootsie, the Tootsie Owl, I think. <laughs> oh, goodness. I could not find another owl like him listed. I could find lots of home co owls, the foam ones, but I could not find a chalkware owl listed. So I'm not sure how much he's going to go for. You guys know that the foam... Home Co. Owls go for like five to ten dollars a piece, but I think this guy's gonna go higher because he has chalkware and because he's unique. There's no other ones out there that I could find, but they're probably, but I just couldn't find them. Uh, so I would expect probably to get twenty to thirty for him. That's what I'm thinking. Now, let's talk about the Goodwill. I believe I paid 30 something at the Goodwill. 30 something for all of this stuff, not including the Afghan and the giant cat, which are out in my car, and I didn't feel like going out in the dark to go get them. So they're still out in the car. So imagine that they're here on the table. <laughs> if you watch the video and you know what I'm talking about. Let's start with our restaurant wear. Now, the reason I pick up restaurant wear, you guys see me do this a lot. This is restaurant wear. It's very heavy duty, very strong. As Sue said in the video, it's like a murder weapon. You can just bludgeon so much. Death. I mean, it was very morbid. She said it, not me. Um, the reason I buy restaurant wear is because one of my neighbors, she's really into vintage stuff, mid-century modern. She's the coolest 1950s bar in her basement. It is like you're stepping back in time. She has Fiesta wear. That was her whole dining set was Fiesta wear. And she is now getting rid of all her Fiesta wear. 
I'm trying to get it. Um, <laughs> she's getting rid of all her PS wear and she's decided that she's going to be getting restaurant wear. And she cannot find it. She cannot find the pieces that she needs. And I'm telling her, well, have you checked Etsy? What's Etsy? Oh, well, let me show you. So I'm looking on Etsy for the restaurant wear that she wants. And she wants a certain, I think she likes the green stripe, kind of like this one. Um, but she wants a certain brand that's not this. And so I'm looking on Etsy and I can't find any of these pieces that she's looking for. And it, it, it occurred to me that there is a market for this stuff and there are not pieces listed. So every time I find restaurant wear, I, I buy it because I realize that there are people like my neighbor who are seeking out these pieces, this vintage restaurant wear and can't find it. So when I find it, I buy it and I sell it to people like my neighbor who are looking to complete their set. So <laughs> it's probably a long, really unneeded story, but that is why I buy restaurant wear. Now this is um, Trenoli Blake China, Ravenswood, West Virginia. Um, this is like really super heavy duty, like more heavy duty than most of the stuff I come from. As Sue said, it's like really crazy. Uh, there are some pieces listed. They don't fetch an exorbitant amount of money, but I would expect probably to get like $10 for the bowl and maybe 10 to 15 for the mug, possibly. I don't know. I'm kind of just throwing numbers out there. That seems reasonable to me. But I'm not really sure about that market. So well, I guess we'll see. You we can all go watch the listings together. Um, now, the Georges Briard. See, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. So um, I said Jorge in my video, and I'm like, you know, it's probably wrong. I'm just going to call it Briard. We've got this Briard dish wear um, it's marked briard with the copyright it is a silver band see the band here it's not faded the fade is one thing the band is another thing this is silver band um, it is more than likely actual silver overlay and it's got florals on it hearts and florals and there's a couple pieces online that have sold Specifically, a pitcher that sold for 30, I think 30. Uh, so I've got a bowl and I've got three little dishes. So for the bowl, I would expect to get 20 to 25. For the dishes, probably about the same 20 to 25. I mean, it's not a very iconic mid century pattern, it doesn't scream mid century because of the flowers and the heart. If it was just the silver band, then we're talking mid-century. But the flowers and the hearts kind of like throw off the whole vibe a little bit. Uh, okay, the Fenton Bear. <laughs> a lot of people were like, well, how do you know it's Fenton? I just know these things. I've got a whole cabinet right there full of little Fenton figurines. And I know a Fenton Bear when I spot it. It doesn't have any marks. Looks like it used to maybe have a sticker right here. I think that this guy probably had a little necklace that was removed. There doesn't appear to be any residue though, which is strange. Uh, he's not painted. He's completely blank, which is strange. Usually there is something. There is usually something on them. And this guy is just completely blank. Anyway, uh, I would expect probably to get... 10 to 15 because he's blank. I had to restart. All right, um, let's let's talk about Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> I just thought these guys were adorable. <laughs> I couldn't leave them there. They they were just too much. This is what I want to be in like 10 years. No, probably like a few more than 10 years. It's gonna take me a little bit more than 10 years. Um, but anyway, they, they don't sell for a terrible amount of money. They are made by Stewart Inc. And they probably sell for 10 to $15 a piece without the chairs. Mine have chairs. And I actually don't know if they come with the chairs or if the chairs were added later on. That I'm not sure of. Because the people are marked St. Paul, Minnesota and the chairs are marked China. 
So it's possible that they didn't actually come together and they were paired up later, but I think they look pretty good in their chairs and I could see them sitting out on the porch. <laughs> Oh, we've got a train coming. Uh, I'm gonna pause the video and I will get back to you after the train. All right, well, that was actually a pretty quick train this time. Um, so, <laughs> as I was saying, these guys probably would sell for, I wanna say, $15 a piece. So we're talking $30 to $35 because they have their chairs. The other chairs would probably be like $25 to $30. Um, we're gonna, let's talk about this. I did peel off the sticker. Uh, the pattern is Fairy Dell and it is Copeland Spode, England. And it is an eight inch plate. And we'll probably we're talking in 10, I don't know, maybe eight to ten dollars for this plate. There's, there's one listed right now for $30. I think that's being a little optimistic for a single plate. I don't think that they're gonna get $30. I don't know. <laughs> now this piece, I'm still not sure what it says on the back. I put my glasses on, I could not read it. I asked Andrew what it says on the back. He could not read it. I don't know what this says. It's driving me absolutely bonkers. So I'm not sure. Yeah, it's just a bunch of letters. I'm not sure what this is worth. I'm not sure how old it is. Like I said, when I picked it up, I looked at the front. I didn't think it was that old, but when I turned it over and I saw the back, I thought, you know what? Maybe this is older than I thought it was. But I'm gonna hold on to it for now. I think I might use it. Hopefully it doesn't have any lead in it. I don't know. I don't know how old it is. Um, I might use it a little bit and then I'll list it. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, this is everything that we got in the past two days. I think our total spend was right around $100. We'll say that. Right around $100. But we got some really great stuff and all of it is listed. Oh, wait. We forgot about our giant cat. We got our giant cat with the chipped ear that you guys might remember from the video that is not out on the table. If you haven't seen the video, you can go back and watch it. It was yesterday's video. Uh, that I paid $7 for. I love giant ceramic cats and I usually get probably $30 to $40 for them. So with his chipped ear, he'll probably be on the lower end of that, uh, probably closer to 30, maybe even under 30, maybe like 28, I don't know. I'm gonna list him up for auction um, like I usually do. He is cute. That might drive the price up. Cuteness is a factor. I'm, I swear to the cuteness. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and the afghan, the bright green afghan that Sue found for us, that was great as well. Uh, and afghans, I cannot predict what afghans are gonna do. I just list them and I let the buyers decide what they wanna pay for them. When you're only paying up to six bucks for them, they're gonna go for more than six dollars, normally. For me, they do, but they had to be something unique. They had to be something fun. You know, the Daisy Afghans, those do well. Um, there just has to be something fun or funky about them. They can't just be plain, boring Afghans. So that is my word on Afghans. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I think we did pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with everything we got. I'm pretty pleased with how it's doing on eBay at this very moment because like I said, I was on top of that and I got it all listed. Took off all the little tags so I couldn't tell you I paid this for this, I paid this for this. Um, but anyway, I am going to go edit this video and get to bed. We've got a party here in a few days that I am trying to get ready for and it's just been crazy trying to get the videos out and all of that. But um, anyway, I've got a surprise for you guys that um, I'm probably gonna be posting about over on my vlog channel in the next couple days. So if you're not subscribed over there, make sure you're subscribed over there. And I will see you guys tomorrow for a shopping trip to the community. All right, later, bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've spotted something that you just can't live without, don't worry. I've put a link to our Etsy store down in the description.